this is the Toyota RF1A transfer case off of four cylinders Toyota 22 REs. Today I'm going to do a teardown. I have never done a teardown on the T-case. So this will be my first time. This video will be not for entertainment purpose, but for educational purpose only. So uh, it might be a little bit long because it's going to be a very, very detailed video of me tearing it down. So in case if I do forget something, I can always go back and watch it. And for anybody that's interested just like me that has never done it, you guys can also watch this video. We're going to do a... Uh, it's already been cleaned out, so all the oil is drained out. Um, all the outside has been degreased. There's a little bit of leftover stuff, but we're going to break it down and have some fun on it. And this is my first time doing it, so I'm going to show you guys what, I'm, what I have. I have my whole uh, Craftsman tools. <coughs> I have my impact and some other tools, gloves, Ziploc bags. This is for all my boats. Make sure you label all your boats, which boats goes where in each cover. There's five different covers. One, two, three, four, and five. There's, so there's five separate covers, so make sure you guys <coughs> label them. On top of that, I do have the Marlin Crawler 470 gear install guide. This is a get install guide, but it also gives you a quick breakdown of the dissimile of it so this is what i'm gonna use and we're gonna go step by step according to this guide here so if you guys get lost make sure you guys have this guide available it's on their website and you can definitely follow along there's five cover one two three four five so this is the first this is the second this is the third this is the fourth cover and then this right here is the fifth cover which is the front uh, dry shaft so make sure we're gonna go off of that and we'll make sure we label everything correctly so let's get right into it and let's do the install first thing I'm gonna do is I might remove this guy here and also the shift lever here so we can get this out of the way if you pop out the rubber boots this shift lever has a little uh, snap ring here then pop out this snap ring and that's how the uh, that's how this lever just pops out so if you ever need to replace your uh, your caps in here it's really easy it goes in one way you guys can see the ridge right there so let's put it in neutral and then we're gonna set this aside make sure you go to your local postal office and get some boxes and then that's what I'm doing I have tons of shipping box and we're gonna throw them in the shipping box and accept 12 millimeter bolts to remove these on top right here four bolts needs a bit of cleaning right there too so we're gonna set this aside for now I'm just gonna lay everything down first and then I'll throw them in the box and label them later but for now, I'm just going to set them aside for now. It's a pretty bad gasket right here. This is what it looks like once you remove it. You have this piece here. And then you have this piece here. The next thing we're going to remove is we're going to remove this nut right here. This is the rear flange. Or this is the rear dry line flange. we got to pop out this nut. This is a lock nut or an indent nut to safely secure it. So we're going to pop that out. And then we'll be able to remove this uh, dry, dry shaft flange right here. This is a 30 mil uh, nut. The 30 mil nut, I can use the impact drive, remove that. There's also a washer right here. <clears throat> so make sure you remember the order. There's a washer right there for reference. The nut, this is the rear. And then uh, if you were having a uh, rear, if you were having a pinion seal leak, uh, this is the gasket that you would replace. So you remove that flange and then you replace <coughs> this little gasket in there. And also make sure you clean it and also you put some RTV inside the splines right here to prevent any leaks. So we're going to do that. And then the next step we're here is we're going to remove the seven bolts. So we're going to remove these seven bolts. These are 14 mil. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Also, if you don't know what kind of gear case you have, if you don't know if you have a gear case or a chain case, the gear case, this, the gear case has seven bolts. So that's the best way to easy to def identify it. So 14 mils for these guys. Before we remove the seven bolts, this is also the speed sensor, so make sure we remove that first. It just doesn't say that, but it's a 12 mil bolt. And it has a little thing right here, so don't lose this piece. This is the locking piece. You can see that right there. It slides into that, and then this guy just kind of pops out. With a little bit of effort, you can pull it out, so let me get the flathead. Just like that. <coughs> There's a little bit of fluid in there. This is what it looks like. This is my first time seeing one, so pretty interesting. So we're going to set this aside. <coughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this bolt back on. So 
So I'm gonna put this right here and I'm gonna slap the bulk back on so we don't lose this, all right? So just like that, we're gonna secure this right here so we don't lose it for now. Remove the seven bolts on the rear case. This is a 14 mil. We're gonna go ahead and get a Ziploc bag and put these in there and we're gonna label it rare case or this is case number, this is case cover four. So we're gonna label it cover four bolts. I'm also gonna put the bolt and the little locking ring for the speed sensor with the seven bolts of for the case cover four, rare case. Next thing is that this bolt cover here should pop out right easily. So we're gonna give it a little gentle slap here. I shouldn't use a rubber mallet, but. Uh, and just like that, wow, this is my first time seeing one. Wow, this is amazing, guys. I'm impressed. There's lots of water in there because the other day, I uh, yesterday I pressure washed it. <coughs> but that's it right there. <coughs> we're gonna clean this up a little bit more too and there's the gasket so we're gonna set this aside for now case cover number four and wow look at all this is all the gears all right the next step we're gonna be doing is we're gonna remove the idler shaft bearing snap ring so there's a snap ring right here you guys can see that we're gonna remove that real quick just like that Remove the idler shaft bearing outlet, remove the 10 bolt and the cover number three. So we're gonna remove these 10 bolts right here and this is cover number three. So this is the next one up. Uh, for the record, this is the rear shaft bearing that goes right here. Step number four, remove the 10 bolts for cover number three. So we do see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We do see 10 bolts. These are all 14 mil. So we're gonna slap them out of here real quick. These 10 bolts are a little bit longer than the other bolts that went onto the case number four. For the record, this bolt right here on the top side, it's a bit more longer. Also, the fourth, the last bolt down here is also much longer too. So the bolt right down below this idler gearing. And just for the record, we're gonna do a quick measure. Okay, they're the same size. So we have four bolts that are longer. One, two, three, and the fourth one down here. It's pretty hard to mix them up. These other bolts are about the same size, maybe two inch. So let me just take a quick photo of that. Cover three, 10 bolts, four that are long. This bolt right here is your fill bolt when you add your oil, your gear oil. So you don't really have to take that off. And uh, now we're gonna go ahead and slightly tap this. This thing should break out really easily. Just like that this is cover number three guys for the record it has a little bit of oil right there and it also has a bearing in here so when you do a replacement rebuild most likely we'll replace this race bearing it also has the gasket we'll go ahead and clean that out i'm probably gonna have this really nice and clean and i might have it uh b blast too as well and then i might even paint it but we'll see what happens so this is cover number three for the record we're on step five. Step five is to pull out and remove the two oil transfer tube. These are the two oil transfer tube right here that they're talking about. So it looks just like that. And uh, it only goes in one way. So you have one right here and one right here. And they only go in one way because if you put it the other way, it won't go in. So these are the two oil transfer tube for the record. Set them inside. Wow, you guys see that? So this is a great inside look. This is my first time seeing the inside of a transfer case. So I'm just gonna take a quick second and look at everything real quick. And hopefully you guys can observe with me too and I'll let you guys know what I see. So we have a bearing right here. This is the bearing. There's a big gear right here. Big gear right here. Oh, look at that. There's some residue right here. Look at that, what is that? This is like a metal shaving. I'm not sure where that came from, but it's right here, so. All right, so the next step is to remove, uh, after the two oil transfer, remove the front drive idler gear. So this this piece here, and uh, there's a snap ring right here. There's a snap ring right here, so we're gonna slap that out real quick. There we go. So for the record, this is the snap ring for the idler gear. 
and this guy pops out it says oh this is a whole piece right here so this is one whole piece guys check that out it only goes in one way there it is right there the bearings are pretty smooth but uh it's probably good to replace them and i believe if you want to replace this bearing you have to actually get it pressed out so <clears throat> right down here is another bearing and uh, it goes in like that it goes in like that but we're not gonna mess with it now we'll just set that aside for now we'll put the snap ring right here step number seven is to remove the speedo drive gear lock ball oil pump do not lose the ball so that's this right here so they have this piece whoa, whoa, whoa. i just filled the ball of loss yeah be very careful guys i the ball just dropped but luckily you guys see that that's the ball right there so you can see on the back of this gear here you can't uh this is a you can see right there that's where the ball goes so there's this there's a ball right here there's a spline right here at the end of the spline right here there's a little ball there's a spot for the ball right here and then this slides over that so We'll go ahead and set this aside for now. So that was the speedo gear drive, the lock ball, and this oil pump gear drive. This is the oil pump gear drive that they're talking about. It looks like that. You have two sides. This side goes in first. So this is the order. One, two. Speedo gear drive. Okay. The next step number eight is to remove 63 two and eight rear main shaft gear bearing. So this is the bearing they're talking about right here, I think. This gear bearing pops right out with no uh, effort. I can tell these are the original bearings because they still have uh, NSK, which is a Japan bearing. And they're really smooth. They feel really good, so they might be still good and such. Okay, so that's all right now. Uh, we remove the main shaft bearing. Step number nine is shift into two high. Remove two wheel, four wheel shift pork pin with 316 inch punch. Next step is you want to shift in two wheel high. So basically the lever on the far right, you want to push it back. Once you push it back, this thing will pop out. The shift fork will pop out. Let me show you guys. You guys see how the shift forks pop out? There's a pen right there. There's this pen right here. This is a 316, 316 pin punch. And uh, we got to punch that out. But I don't think I have a punch for that. So we'll see what happens. Let's go ahead and go back with the Allen key. And use this instead. Let me show you guys what it looks like right now what it looks like just need to pound it just a little bit more and it'll come out it's almost clearing it this is what the little pin looks like little sucker almost hit my thumb on it so uh, ouch be very careful okay next step is to remove the shift fork and shift collar oh so it just pops out just like that you guys saw that This is what it looks like, the shift collars, shift forks. Make sure you keep these. I'm going to gently slap this back in here just a little bit just to hold it in place so we don't lose it. Just like that. So that's the shift fork. Next thing we do is remove the shift forks and shift collar. Uh, remove the front output hub. Output hub. not coming out we're on step 11 remove the front output hub so this gear hub is supposed to come out it's not coming out there's two gears right now there's this one and this big one this one's supposed to come out first so we're currently on step 11 this is the front output hub i'm not able to remove it so we're gonna skip this whole section and go to step 15 which is to remove the front output 30 mil front one so this is the front cover five this is the front and dry line cover 
So we're gonna flip this around real quick. So one quick trick to remove this nut because when you use the impact, this thing will just spin. So what I did was I put this uh, little, uh, put this little punch in right here, and then a screwdriver like this, and then you shoot it like this, and this like that. You see that? Of course, it's already loose because I broke the impact already, but that's one way to get it out because it'll just be spinning freely. Same thing on this one. This one has a uh, has a washer right there too, so make sure <laughs> make sure you keep that washer in there and don't lose it. Just like that, it's a bit greasy. We'll go ahead and clean that out too. These are reusable. This is the rear, so it's really easy to identify the rear. The rear is circular, and this front one is a square. So rear, rear dry shaft, front dry shaft. Step 16 is to remove the front output snap ring. So there's a snap ring back over here. We'll go ahead and do that real quick. Hold on, I don't see no snap ring. Sorry, remove the front cover first. 12 millimeter bolt. And just a simple tap should come. Oh, I don't, I don't need to tap it. It's coming out already. So this is the front dry shaft flange. This is cover number five, they call it. That's the seal right there. You definitely want to replace that whenever you do a rebuild. So it has four bolts. Make sure you don't lose these four bolts. They're really small 12 millimeter bolts. We'll go ahead and flip it around. You can see that's the gasket right here. And then right here is the snap ring. It's easy to do if you have a... So we'll go ahead and pop that right in here. Just like that, guys. Carefully, these things can pop around. So that's the front dry shaft snap ring. We're gonna put it with the front cover of five, cover five. And then uh, next thing is to remove the front drive line bolt. So this thing here will just pop out. Just give a little nice tap here. So nice tap and this guy come out. This is the front output gear, you see that? This is a bearing, this is one of the bearings that you would replace. So this right here would require you using a press to get it in there. So make sure we have a press or something. But this is a pretty big output shaft. Make sure you inspect all the teeth and yeah, look for any wear or tear. And everything looks pretty good. So we're gonna set this aside. We're gonna set this along with the front cover here so we don't lose it. All right, we have the next step here is to remove the four bolts for the shifter base. We already did that in the first place. And then also remove the four wheel drive light switch, which is right here. This is the four wheel drive light switch. Three quarters too small, so. If you don't have the right size, you should always have a vice grip. Oh, this one's already bad. This one's bad, all the wires nicked out already, so maybe we have to rebuild that or just cap it off and don't have a four-wheel drive light switch. I don't have one on my truck right now, so I don't really care for it. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is remove the indent plug, ball, and spring from each side of the upper case. What they're talking about is right here. So on the case right here, you see there's a hex key right here. And a hex key on the other side. Removing the two detent plugs right with the ax key, uh, hex key. A cool trick is to get an open end wrench or open close wrench and uh, we're going to use this as leverage. There's two on each side so make sure you get both ends <laughs> and also get a Ziploc bag ready and put these away because there are small parts so they can definitely get a uh, they can definitely get lost. That's what the boat looks like right here. I might have to pick at it. So you have the bolt, the spring, spring, and then there's a little ball in there. There's the little ball, steel ball, so make sure you don't lose that. So once again, we have the bolt goes, the ball goes first, the spring, and then the bolt. And then we're going to do the other side as well. There's one more right here. Lefty loosey, righty, righty tighty, so make sure you don't mix that up. I don't think this transfer case has ever been open. I think this is the original one, like fully original, original gasket and everything. So I don't think this one has ever been open. And it's really nice because there's no leaks or anything like that. So it's been really, uh, it's definitely manufactured. I went ahead and labeled them, the bolt, the spring, and then the ball first. So I don't, uh, I don't forget the pattern. Step 21 is remove the four bolts holding cover one. There's two on the front. 
and then two on the side right here. These are all 14 millimeter bolts. It's really nice because this project you only need a 12 and 14 for most of your bolts. They are the same size bolt. So these four bolts will go to cover five. So this is for cover five. Um, no, sorry, this is for cover one. So cover box one. Okay, so the next step is to remove the idler shaft snap ring. So that's the other side right here. There's two snap rings on this side right here. On the input shaft, one down here and one right here. We're gonna remove that. <laughs> You guys know, I honestly thought I bought a good snap pliers from uh, Napa, but man, these is not even the best ones. I need to get a new one. So they are a different size. So the top one, the input shaft is a different size from the bottom one. So you can't definitely mix them up. I know this is very dangerous. So if you do plan on using a knife or anything sharp, just be very careful. This is what I have right now. It's only... So they are two complete different size. You can see right there. Two different sizes, so you can't mix them up. They won't work each other, so you can't mix that up. So we'll set these aside right here. The next thing is step 24, drive out the pins from both shift rails. Pins will fall into the bottom of the case. So you guys remember earlier, I don't really have a punch, so we're going to try our best to do that. If we can't do that, we're going to go ahead and skip that to step 25, which is slide cover number 14, and remove the retrieving shift fork row pins. The row pins they are just talking about are these two pins right here. You have to remove those out in order to get the shift forks lever. So we're going to do our best to get it out. It's easy, but I just don't have the right punch right now. So 5.30 seconds. I busted my thumb earlier, so be very careful. I'll go ahead and use the plier to hold it in place. And then I'll punch it with the other guy. I hear it popped out. All right, they're out. I hear them in there, so we're done with that step. Step number 25 is to slide cover number one. This is cover number one, four, and remove the two forks. I'm gonna slightly tap it, guys, slightly tap it. Again, I don't have my rubber mallet on me, but I think we'll be fine with just a little nice tap. Just a little tap, nothing's gonna hurt a guy. Hammer doesn't really hurt it, just a little tap. It's just the gaskets are a little bit in there tight, so. There we go. All right, here it comes out, guys. Here's cover number five. Ugh. Just like that. So we have that piece there. Things drop, a few things drop, so I'm not sure what went where. This is the shift fork, one of the shift fork. And also, we're going to go ahead and get the two pins that came out, the two row pins. So let me take a quick break here and show you guys what we have. So this is cover number one. We have the main, uh, this is the rear. They're not moving right now. That's weird. So we have that and that. And then on this side... Oh, we have a washer too. I'm not sure what the heck this washer came out from, but we have a washer. I'm not sure where this washer came out from, but uh, hopefully we'll find a place for it. On this side, we have the gears. There's also some race bearings in here. These are the ones that you would have to replace if you are doing them. And uh, we're going to take a quick look. These are the shift... Uh, Pin, pin, whatever you want to call it. Just, there's two of them. This one is jammed in there. I'm not sure why. Okay, so we're moving to the next step. The next step is to... Uh, we were on step 25 where we removed the slide cover 1, cover box 1, and then remove the input gear. The next step is to remove the input gear, which is this right here. We're just gonna... Ooh! Before we do that, this guy just fell out, so make sure you get the row pin out, this little pin here. And then we're going to give this a little quick tap right here. It's pretty much, it's pretty tight in there, so 
you definitely have to give a little tap for the input gear so it's the input gear right here guys for Riker for the Riker just in case I don't forget this bearing here is definitely bad so I think to remove this bearing there's another snap ring right there so we're gonna set this aside for now there's a lot of parts right now there's so many parts hopefully I don't forget anything and then uh, that's, that was step number 26 which was to remove the input gear and then uh, step number 27 is to remove the counter shaft gear which is the bottom one so this is the counter shaft this right here is the counter shaft gear it's pretty smooth oh we do have to remove this so give me a second here we do have to remove this there's a snap plier here so let's remove that real quick looks like you don't have to remove it it just popped out already so you don't really have to remove that unless you want to replace this bearing so now we have cover five completely out guys cover one actually sorry i keep confusing it so this is cover one super light super nice we'll go ahead and get this clean up it is quite dirty this is all cast aluminum so don't worry don't worry about it getting wet it won't rust at all it's aluminum Okay, next step is to remove the pocket bearing from the main shaft, step 28. Uh, which I can't really access right now because this piece is stuck. So let me think for a second here. So the last thing we have left is just these two guys here. This one. This one goes on the far right. Oh, and this pin just comes out. So this is the other one. So really, all we have left is this gear, which I couldn't get out because it was stuck on the other side right there. So we'll try to see what I can do. Right between where the shift fork is, there's an interlocking pin, which looks like this. Looks like this. It slides in from right here. So make sure you just kind of tilt it over and slide it over and keep that with the shift fork so you don't lose it. That was step number 31. We're on step 32 which is to remove the four bolts in the main shaft bearing cover. Four bolts they're talking about are these four bolts in here. But I can't get to it because earlier I couldn't get this gear off. So I'm going to try to find a way to get this gear off so we can backtrack a little bit. Because once we get this off we're pretty much done breaking this thing open. And we have just two sets of gear out here left. And then all these race bearings so... For the meanwhile, I all went ahead and took out this snap ring here for this bearing. This is a race bearing and this one is pressed in. So you can get this out by punching it out from the rear. So you can see from this side, I have my uh, bearing punch. So I'll get my bearing race here and get this punched out. But I might leave it in there and um, I might leave it in there because I plan to go ahead and install everything back together after I clean it just so I know how everything is so I might leave this in here for now so just for the record if you are doing a breakdown that's how you remove it remove the snap ring and then get a bearing press or a punch and then punch it out so that's for the record and this is original Nachi Japan bearings this one is the same concept you can get a this one doesn't have a snap ring but you can get a bearing uh, to punch and get it punched out it's kind of tight in there because it's blocked up on this way too, so I wonder how you would get that out, but uh, but it's definitely doable. But so far, it looks really in good shape, so you might not even have to replace yours. Or you might not even replace it because it looks in really good shape, so as long as you keep it lubed up. This one is actually really still good too. I don't see a reason why you should replace it, but if you feel like doing it, you can definitely do it. Or if you have the kit, you can definitely replace it. So we are backtracking to this gear here that I couldn't get out earlier. And, uh... I got my screwdriver in there and I kind of pried it open and it's it's coming out but it's very tight but I also recently bought this little uh, drum brake adjuster and it fits right in there so we're gonna try to give it a shot you can see the gap right there it's coming out but it's really really tight I don't know why see the gap difference now right there I was able to get the gear out finally so the gear comes out like that you have the first one, and then you have this this dual one here. This one has a gear here, the big gear. You can see the damages that I did because of the um, all the paint, but it's still in good shape. I didn't break anything. So you have that, and then you have a few race bearings, two race bearings, 
these are all really in good shape still two race bearing because they go in here like that you can see both of them both of them fit in this two here I'm not sure why they don't make it just one whole bearing but there's two of them inside this gear here and then you have this you have this spacer midjiggy and then also in the input in this shaft here there's another indent ball there's another BB ball so make sure when you take it out you don't lose it and you can see right here that's where it goes so this indent ball here goes right here Okay, now we can move on to the next step, which is to remove the four bolts. These are 12 millimeter bolts. Let's get right to it. I'm just gonna call this cover the input shaft cover. It has four 12 millimeter bolt. So give that a clean and uh, we'll put the bolts back in here and then we'll label everything later and I'll show you guys a full video of the, all the layout once we get once we're done breaking this part. This is a very greasy job. I was wearing glove and then the glove got really hot and annoying so I decided to just take off the damn gloves. Okay, so now we have this, this left here. That's all we have left. Just this right here and this right here. So in order to take out this gear, I'm not even reading the manual no more because I pretty much self-explanatory now. But uh, in order to take out this gear here, we basically take out this snap ring. There's a big old snap ring right here. These are the Nachi bearings, the original Japan bearings. This has definitely never been opened. So this is the, we got one snap ring here and then we also got one up in the input shaft. I'm going to go ahead and remove both of them. Here's the snap ring, the big one. I didn't record it, but I didn't really have to take out that snap ring. Uh, this thing just popped right out here, this whole gearing here. Let me show you guys, I can show you guys. So this guy actually just pops right out from the from the main case here, the last case. So there we go. We have the last case here. I forgot what number this one is, but the only thing left is just the cleaning of it. And these two bearings that I talked about earlier, which you have to press it out, press it in. So that's the last case right there. Now we are left with the input shaft, which is this big boy here. And uh, we're just going to do a quick look at it and inspect it because this is my first time looking at one of these guys. So I need to see what I'm messing with. Oh my gosh. Oh shoot. I'm bleeding everywhere. Yeah. This is why it's good to wear gloves. Um, not latex glove, but like mechanic gloves. That's okay. Just a little blood. So we do have... We have this main bearing here, which, oh my gosh, I, I keep saying this, but all these bearings are still in like really, really good shape. And um, I'm basically what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm, this T case is for learning purpose. I bought this T case just because I want to break it down and learn how it works and also learn how to put it together. So I'm going to get everything nicely clean, put in hot water, soap it up, clean out all the grease and stuff, make sure it's really, really clean out with all the dirt and grease. And I'm just going to put it back together the way it is. Try to do it without the manual. I'm going to try to do it with my own, just from memory. And if I get stuck, I'll use the manual, but I'm just, I'm just going to install it back together. Um, not a full install, not with gasket and stuff, just a bolt on and then take it back off, bolt it on back on. I'm going to do it a couple times here just so that I get it in my memory and, uh, and memory muscle. And then uh, and in the future, if I want to do 470s, which I could, but I, don't, I don't need to. I already have 470s, but in the future, I can always throw in some 470 gears or I can just rebuild it and then sell it to somebody that might need it. Just keep it the 228s and get new bearings and new, get new gasket kits. But for now, we're just going to play around with it, take it apart, clean it, and put it back together and go from there. So, I'm not going to go into the breakdown of this gear, this last shaft here. Because this last, this last shaft is really easy actually. Um, you just pop out this this snap ring here which I can't because uh, my pliers kind of sucks and then this bearing will come out and then these two gearing will come out after that these are this piece here is connected to the main shaft but that's pretty much it right here and we'll go ahead and put everything back together the way it is so really it's uh you have this piece here That piece there has a little indent. You see that little indent right there? That's where the ball goes in. 
yeah so that's to hold it in place so see how it doesn't move no more because it has that ball in there that goes in there and then this piece goes in you have these two race rails these two race bearings and this piece goes in here like that and then this piece goes in here which is this was the hard gear that gave me issue and you can see it doesn't slide in you can see that it doesn't slide into the spine you actually got to give it a little punch but i'm not going to do that because i don't want it to uh I don't want it to get too stuck in there, but that's pretty much it right here. This is one of the main gear, the input shaft. And then you have this cover here that goes on like that. So I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep all these parts right here in one box. So I don't lose it. It's really nice and nice in one piece right now. I'm gonna keep that in one box so I don't lose it. And then uh here is the final breakdown of all the parts. I have it assemble disassemble. We have the cover one known as the crawl box, some people call it the crawl box. Case number two, cover two. <coughs> Once it's apart, it only has two race bearing, uh, this bearing here and this bearing here. You gotta press them out. <coughs> cover three. And these are your oil, I forgot what they're called, the oil whatever, the oil stick. This is your speed sensor. <coughs> speed sensor. Cover four. This is cover four. This is cover four that goes right here, actually. So let me show you guys real quick. Let me set these aside. This is cover four that goes right here. And this speed sensor goes right here. Uh, cover five. I believe this is the front shaft. Front driving shaft. <coughs> you got the bearing in there, press in there. And then you have the snap ring. <coughs> you got the rear dry line flange. <coughs> the front dry line flange. <coughs> we have the shifter shift cover along with the four bolts. We have the shift lever, which is also uh, the shift lever is held in by this little snap ring. So make sure you don't lose that. Keep those together. We have this part here. This is the rear one of the dry shaft. I forgot. I don't. I don't rem remember the names of it. But um, the, this full video will help me recall everything. These were some of the parts that I found in it. I'm not sure what this part was. It just came out from one of it. So it's just like a oh, it's metal. So we'll trash that. And then this washer fell out. I don't remember where this washer came out from. It was. I was tearing apart the case. So I'm not sure if it's a washer from one of the boats or something, but if you guys know, let me know. We have two shift forks <coughs> with the shift forks. Um, these goes in here, and this is the shift fork guide, I believe is what's called. I forgot what it's called right here. So don't lose any of those. I'm gonna keep all these three together. Oil gallops. And then we have this one here. This is goes. This one is at the bottom of the crawl box. This is the bottom piece that goes in here. <clears throat> this is the out, um, this is the input shaft that goes into your transmission, I believe, if I recall. <laughs> and then you have that too as well. And then you have your main uh, your main output shaft here that has all the gears and stuff like that. So when you're doing a 470 swap, step 40 says that these parts here are the last one you don't need. So you wouldn't need uh, you wouldn't need this part right here. But this is the quick disassembly of the RF1A transfer case gear driven for Toyota 4 cylinder. Hope you guys find this video informative. Please feel free to share some knowledge on the comment section. If you have any knowledge, any tips, anything like that, please feel free to share. This video was documented by Nutty New and uh, this video will help me put this back together because there are lots of parts and we're going to be cleaning them one by one. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys next time. And once I have everything finally cleaned up and all grease free, I'll go ahead and do an install video and we'll go ahead and put everything back together. And that will be a video for you folks that are installing it back together. But if you guys are pretty good with the video, you guys can just kind of reverse everything that we did here. And you can install it yourself. Hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.